regard to creation and evolution, would you consider yourselves uh, evolutionists? Do you think that evolution is true? Yes. Okay, so how would you define science? Do you have a, can you give me just a simple definition of science? So I think science would be uh, making observations okay. and predictions about something you're not uh, sure of, and then going back and analyzing what you've observed, maybe making new predictions, uh, forming new experiments, and then drawing a conclusion based off of what you have seen. Very good. Now, are you a science major yourself? Yes. Are you as well? Yep. Okay. Just curious. So tell me about it. So what is your major? Uh, we're both medical students. S studying to be medical doctors? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Cool. Great. <laughs> In regard to evolution then, do you have, can you give a simple definition of evolution? Would you say that evolution, but it, that there needs to be a common ancestor, that common descent is a major part of evolution? Absolutely. You'd agree with that? Yeah. So then can you provide between the two of you here, can you provide a couple of examples of uh, observable evidence for evolution by common descent? What do you mean? Well, uh, science is observable and repeatable. Mm -hmm. And evolution, there's common ancestors. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for scientific evidence for... Uh, do you know what a evolution. phylogenetic tree is? I sure do. Okay. So that's a, that's a very good evidence for a common ancestor-based evolutionary mechanism. How so? How so? Well, to make a good phylogenetic tree, you're looking at DNA Change similarities. DNA. It ch yeah. changes in the DNA. Mm -hmm. They trace those back over you know X amount of generations. Mm -hmm. It ends up being millions, billions of years. And you can link species that all came from one common ancestor, which would be a source that had like similar DNA, and then you had a mutation that would send maybe one species this way, another species that way, mm -hmm. and you can branch out this pattern of uh, evolutionary development. Okay. No disrespect, but as a creationist, I don't find that to be very convincing because I believe that God designed us and created the, the tree, made well, us... No, it just... Go ahead. No, I, I understand. I oh, understand okay. why you have that point of view and okay. I respect that. And, All right, good. Um, I guess... I do too. Yeah. Okay. The purpose of this interview is mm -hmm. to just It's educational. It. Yeah. Yes, it is It is a discussion and, yeah. and I often learn probably more than the people I talk to. So... Well, ahead. you know, there's actually, it's something that I don't quite understand, but people can actually, on it like a on the level of like microbes can actually sort of recreate like evolutionary processes. So they can actually take like a species of bacteria mm -hmm. and sort of present uh, different environments and these bacteria will actually adapt to that specific environment. So if you put bacteria in an environment that lacks like a certain nutrient that they need, mm -hmm. eventually they're replicating, they're going so fast that mutations in their DNA as they replicate actually build up and eventually by chance, oftentimes, mm -hmm. they'll adapt a new way to actually survive in that environment that previously was unsurvivable in. Okay, now, so you said something that's very important, very scientific, okay. Um, do you have any experience, religious background? Do you yeah. Have, you, you do, both yeah. of you do? Yeah. Okay, um, so as a Christian, the Bible tells us that God created various kinds. You know, he didn't create every breed of cow or every breed of dog. He created dogs, right, or wolf type of yeah. animal. And then you have, so built into these various animals, there is genetic variability. Built into bacteria is the genetic, the genetic information for a variety of different changes. Same for viruses. So again, the fact that that bacteria change or adapt, I don't see as evolutionists use it as evidence for evolution. Yeah, well, but I don't see it as as strong evidence for evolution. Well, I think what what really is the key issue here is mm -hmm. is evolutionists trying to to discredit the fact that there was a creator. I mean, that's really the the key. It is. It is. Right, but I mean, especially you, among atheists. Yes. Yeah. Well, it, the thing is, is that science can never prove or disprove the presence of 
a creator. And that's just something that I think that for some reason unnecessarily enters the discussion of evolution. I think that when you're talking about evolution, the data is there. I mean, we can recreate it. You don't see it like on a scale of, you know, organisms like us because it takes so long. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't see that. It, what I'm saying is you can have evolution. You mm -hmm. can't deny the data. You can't deny the fact that we have fossil records that pretty accurately go back to the beginning of life on Earth. Uh, and For many of these things, the data, I agree, the, the data is there, but how, it's, how the data is interpreted is, is up for debate. Yeah. He wants to mention well, something. So what I want to say is, it's, in your opinion, is it not feasible that evolution does exist and there could also be a creator out there? A lot of people bring up that question, and, and part of the answer to the question is how one defines evolution. Because oftentimes in discussions, people will say, well, we see evolution everywhere, and specifically when you're talking about bacteria. So if evolution is just simply change or change over time, I'm an evolutionist. But that's not really what people mean when they say evolution. So what is, what is your definition of evolution? Evolution, uh, I think, no, I have a microphone here. So um, evolution is by common, just that there's a common ancestor. And that's the part of evolution that I, I don't agree with. Some people will say, oh, that's macroevolution or that sort of thing. But um, What do you mean by common ancestor? Well, a lot of people would, about uh, the chimpanzee, the, the various apes, that mm -hmm. we descended from a common ancestor with the apes, as an example. Sure. I do not agree with that. So you believe that all of... Uh, the different species that exist, even though they may seem similar or different, mm -hmm. they exist individually as their own thing. They're not linked at all. Well, it's a little bit different. Biblically, the Bible describes it that when he, God created, he created kinds. And it's also described very similarly in the description for Noah and the flood, is that he brought the animals on after their own kind. Kind is, is a biblical concept I would say it's generally larger, a larger group, family group, than a species. So it is not, you can't just say, oh, well, uh, there's this species of bird and there's, you know, all these millions of, of birds that, uh, that he had to include on the ark. No, sure. it's just certain, certain groupings of birds. Okay, I, have, I have another question, if that's sure. okay. How do you uh, reconcile with the fact that the Bible, which is mm -hmm. you know, man-made and passed down over many thousands of years could have been changed or we know has been changed at various times, you know, and the content may have been skewed one way or a different way. Uh, how, how, comfortable, huge, how comfortable, how comfortable, I know, yeah. as, uh, I'm like trying to dabble Besides, into you're it. Besides, you're how also you, uh, skewing the question in such well, a way as no, no, to I'm say just saying, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you See, first of all, feel I'm comfortable not gonna... relying on that source of information for the core of your argument, when evolution can abstract data from thousands of, hundreds of thousands of different sources from across the world, from different institutions, from over, you know, over a temporal scale too, mm -hmm. that's remained consistent, and if anything, it's only built upon itself in strength. But creation or intelligent design is able to uh, draw from every field of science that the evolutionists do, and do it much better and more consistently. The data is real. It's how one interprets the data that's up, that's up, for, up for grabs. And so, uh, let me give you a piece of, something to think about before, before you go, you're probably yeah. getting cold and wanting to yeah. go. Let me give you something to think about. We see design everywhere. I see design everywhere, human design. The microphone, the clothes, the, the buildings, <clears throat> bicycle, um, cars, cell phones, human design is every, and it's very complex. And the more complex it is, the more likely it was designed, okay? Biological things, organisms, are also complex. <laughs> In fact, they're many times more complex than anything, human, anything humans have ever devised. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I've never met anybody that's denied that. And yet, in, a, in the university science classroom, it's automatically assumed that it was not designed, but it came about by natural causes. To me, that's, that's a disconnect. It doesn't, it's, it's illogical. It, it is. It's, the, the... I've often found myself wondering that as well, how something so complex 
uh, could arise just by itself. And I think that it's just a matter of, it's almost kind of like a matter of faith. You have to believe in something. And I believe, Let me mention yeah, too. What, I, what? I strongly believe that it, it, over the billions of years that we know this planet has been in existence in the universe, that mm -hmm. it, that's enough time to sort to sort some things out. To me, it's illogical. Let me let me mention one more thing. Order. We see order everywhere, kind of like what we were saying about design. You go into a kid's room and you see it being ordered. You know, there's a bed. There's chest of drawers. There's pictures on the wall. Those things didn't get there by random chance. No, people, they, they build these things, they, they put them there. And if it's a mess, you know, it, it's easy for it to be a mess. Order takes, takes an order-er. So we see order. In the universe, we also see order. We have a finely tuned universe. It seems to be, scientists will say, it seems to be so finely tuned as though it was for our existence. Well, maybe it was for our existence. You, you, you sound scientifically minded. So I'm going to ask, do you know what entropy is? I do, yes. Okay, so... Second time, the second law of thermodynamics. Correct. So going off of that, it, it actually seems to uh, indicate that the universe would prefer disorder over order. How do you uh, explain that? I think we probably have to have a longer conversation. But I see order. Yes, there is disorder, but, but I also see order. I see, I well, see yeah, but just as humans provide order, humans can also provide disorder. Where does the order come from? You cannot deny that order exists, that it exists in the universe, that it exists here on Earth, that, it, that life is ordered, that biology, you know, in bacteria, that there is or extreme complexity and order. Mm -hmm. Where does that order come from, if not from an orderer? Well, I think 4.2 billion years of time, uh, the correct ingredients and uh, proper energy would allow for that order to come about. Well, that's okay, and I think we need to be done with the interview, but I really would like may, you may to ask think you, well, about I will, I will, about absolutely. This, I'm, I'm an open-minded person. Because it does not make sense. Order coming from disorder. That's what you're saying. That's what you're postulating. Can you explain all of this why we have an appendix? Comes from randomness. I'm sorry? Why do we have an appendix? Or why, or why well, does a giraffe every, has a neuron that is two meters long? If, if we have such incredible, perfectly designed systems having flaws in these systems, which we find all the time in biology, wouldn't make sense. And that's one of the, the strong uh, indications for me that a creator probably doesn't exist in the fashion that you are uh, thinking of a creator. I disagree. Okay. All of the vestigial organs, more and more we are finding their purpose. This is what you're giving me is evolution of the gaps. Oh, we cannot find, we don't know what the function is, therefore evolution must have done it. That's evolution in the gaps. You want to know another one? Junk DNA. Mm. Oh, we don't know the function of junk DNA. We it's do not, know. It's we, not junk. It's we do know the function of junk DNA. As of about a year or two or five years ago, that's right. Yeah. Junk DNA has suddenly become in vogue. Oh, now we're finding out what it means. But you see, you go back 20 years or 30 years, it was pronounced by Richard Dawkins and all these people say, oh, this is junk DNA. It was just the icon of evolution. <laughs> all you have to do is throw it out, as you just say junk DNA, and they won the argument. Uh, I'm just, I'm good. I'm, yeah, I, I, need to go I need to go study. Thank you very much for this. Uh,